Hello viewers, Super GT here with some more Gran Turismo sports action. I thought I'd come away maybe a little bit from the Group 3 and Group 4 races. We're going to go into the Toyota GT86. So something a little bit slower. Let's see how clean this race is. Qualifying in fourth position on the grid. And I believe this is the Kyoto Driving Park. One of the various configurations. Away from the line we go. Now the start's kind of... It, it, because it's a rolling start and you're always single file, it doesn't really get too interesting until you get to the first corner. Uh, the, the first corner here though is quite a fast entry, so no real overtaking to report of there unless you're going to cut the corner or something. And then we come up to a very fast sweeping set of S's. And through here, we're going to try to maximise our speed by just turning as little as possible and also just absolutely revving the crap out of the car in fourth gear you see actually I get a good run on the Spaniard up the inside into the next turn turn six maybe up the inside we go third place is ours so there we go now trying to catch up with the Italian and the Belgian so I'd like to know in the comments what what nationality you think makes up the best drivers and the worst drivers in this game because in my experience and I'm sorry if you are Italian but the Italians seem to be the most aggressive that's not to say that they're all bad because of course many are very good but uh, in my short experience so far the Italians tend to be very very feisty and aggressive but we've got a Belgian out of the front he seems to be okay uh, the Germans are very hit and miss I think um, a lot of them are very very clean but then you get the odd maniac who's just a bit mental um, but I suppose that's true of every country I suppose if you look hard enough you will find the maniac and the clean person from every nationality um, I'm not sure which category I fall into maniac or clean guy sometimes it's a bit of both so we are about to complete lap number one through the final corner uh, a lot of you asking about the chase cam settings so you go to the you go to the settings and you can scroll down to controller options and cam, uh, chase cam settings I think it is and I turn the first setting to 0 0.1 normally if you change it to 0, 0.0 the camera is very flexible you, can, you, you notice it's very very sharp or very stiff shall I say it's very stiff from what you can see here uh, but in a way I actually prefer that because you can actually detect oversteer quite easily in this view um, it can be quite hard to control, but um, on 0.0 .0, it looks better, but it's harder to control. So there's there's that, basically. So just still trying to catch up with these two guys. They're very quick. Naturally, that is the way it goes in this game. You qualify in order of your speed or your lap time. So normally the quickest guy is at the front, or always is. And uh, I think the Italian guy just went for a move there. Just backed out. It wasn't quite on. So not going to go for it there. Going to come down the hill. This chicane here is is crucial, I think, to the lap time. You really have to abuse the kerbs. So braking just before the two cones, and if you just keep two wheels on the kerb at least, then it, it counts as clean. You won't get a penalty. So I'm absolutely all over that, like a rash. But uh, the game decides that that is okay. So that basically becomes the new track limit. So everyone will just abuse that as much as possible. So into the the probably the tightest corner in the in the on this circuit perhaps uh, or the last corner I'm not sure and through there we, I mean I was, I was about to catch up because those two guys did make a mistake but I also made a mistake sometimes you can get guilty of watching the guys ahead rather than what you're you're doing you know and then you end up making a mistake instead so coming up to the final corner then I think I've dropped the guy in fourth place so it looks like it's gonna be a clear battle or first or second or, or third I guess although you don't actually fight for third I suppose I'm fighting to get into second so away we go out of the final turn we're going to cross the line to start lap number three of three so just a very short uh, race here uh, less than or well, actually just over six minutes not too long though the Italian going for a move we're looking for one up the inside is he quite going to make it happen not really it's almost like a NASCAR kind of move there where he's on the inside line but the guy on the outside just has the momentum 
and he can just about slot in ahead as he does into the SM once again. I need to get myself involved in this battle. I've kind of just been relegated to the role of spectator for this entire race so far. At least we have gone up a position, I suppose. Coming over the crest into the long left. He's looking for that move again. So I suppose this is... I'm just in the commentary box here. My car is the commentary box looking at the battle for the lead. I'm not really involved in it myself. Hopefully that can change with about half a lap remaining. Uh, flicking to the right down the hill. One of the fastest parts of the track into the technical chicane. And we're going to have to abuse those curbs. There we go over them. And yeah, taking that very nicely. We've gained actually. We've definitely gained. We are pretty much within half a second of the Italian now. So uh, there is a potential for a move maybe. But they have been driving very well. It's often a battle of consistency. I go in a little bit deep. Make almost make contact. And you can see they're just not quite controlling the, the trash control on the exit. Or the lack of trash control, not quite controlling uh, the wheel spin on the exit. I'm going to lose a vital couple of temps as we come down to the next chicane. And then again, making the most of the curbs. And just a bit of uh, a bit of corrective steering through there. I've lost quite a lot of momentum into the final corner. And through we go, hitting the apex, centre of the turn. It's going to be a third place. So, I mean, I only made one move there. That is kind of typical of Gran Turismo. It can be like that quite a lot, but um, still a good race, good challenge, and I hadn't done many laps, so it's good to follow people who are quick, and you can learn quite a lot. In fact, I uh, did a 204 in qualifying, but doing a 202 in the race there, so that's a good way to improve. Just get yourself to the walls, the front, and then follow the quick guys. But now we're going to move to the Renault Megane class, so Group 4, might as well call it the Megane, Megane class, or Group Megane because this car we've seen in a previous video it is overpowered and I mean many people were telling me that there was an update but that doesn't seem to have made this car any less overpowered it is still OP AF um, that, that kind of proven by the fact that the top three here are all Megans so around Suzuka into the first corner the Italian goes for the move on the Brit just bundles him wide absolutely ruthless no messing about at all just shoves him out you know I'm just coming through get out of the way typical Gran Turismo move where you just you just you know side on side contact brutal as fuck uh, no no mercy at all from this lad and I've gone a little bit wide there gonna try to keep up with him the best I can still just a three lap race so again maybe about six minutes in total length about the same as the first race we just saw so coming through Towards the dead deck in the corner. So, uh, this is Dunlop Curb, yeah. Dunlop Curb. I believe it is. And here we have the Degners. Degner 1. Fly through there. Got in the lead. Smashing away the apex cone. Through the second apex. Through there very nicely. This car does have a lot of what seems like torque steer on the exit. Y you put the throttle down. It will just go in a straight line. You kind of have to sh uh, sh I was about to say a rude word there. You have to shift out of second gear very early straight into third otherwise you will just understeer wide on the exit the car just simply will not turn in second gear and so there is that to contend with but once it gets going on the straight there's just nothing matching it really we do have a guy though in third place there in the Aston Vantage so he's actually doing very well there to to mix it with all the McGann's so I did try a couple of other cars since this supposed update but it seems that this car is still the one to choose for this class so away we go, I'm going to skip ahead to about a third of the way through lap number two. And you see the guy ahead just goes a little bit wide there, loses momentum. And that's going to hand the initiative back to me. He was pulling away to about a second away. Now he's about half a second ahead. So I've halved the deficit. Let's see if we can go about getting past him. He's been driving very well so far. And I mean, if you, if you just drive quite well, uh, the only way people can really get past often is by using the brutal side-on-side -side contact move like this guy did on, on lap one against the innocent pole sitter. Or may maybe not so innocent, maybe they've got some history, you know, I never know. You never know the backstory, you never know what might have happened between those two guys. He might have um, stole his girlfriend in real life, you never know, something like that. And he's just getting brutal revenge on Gran Turismo by pushing him wide. Um, as you do, you know, that's the best way to get revenge of course by um, pushing someone wide on a, on a video game, on a racing game, yeah. That's how I do it anyway. 
out of the spoon corner. Now I'm suddenly just going to get a nitrous oxide boost here, or or slipstream just works really well. You see, just gaining and gaining and gaining. 130R isn't a great place to go for a move, admittedly, unless you're like Kimi Räikkönen or Fernando Alonso. And we're going to run a little bit wide on the exit, just slide behind into the final chicane and we're through there very nicely and actually a bit too nicely because we're going to get a penalty now that is really going to scupper our chances here uh, 2.4 seconds worth of time to be uh, to, to be penalised by but we've seen in previous videos and many of you have commented you know just drive, just keep driving and hopefully that, that penalty will go down so I've got to overtake this guy and then wind down that penalty and there is the overtake so now I'm in the lead gone down a little bit of the penalty so this is a very interesting scenario it's it's going to be a it's a weird one i'm in the lead but i also have to get that penalty down or get ahead by two seconds which might be very difficult because this guy was very quick you see that penalty is going down i'm not really slowing down at all i'm not driving any slower than what i normally would and that pen penalty is slowly going down so I'm, i might have to be very tactical here and just slow down in some places just to make sure it does go down because I've only got about half a lap remaining here and I do have to make sure that it does go down so I don't think I'll finish above two seconds away he's right on my tail so coming into the hairpin this is going to be a good place to do it we're going to go in and then through the apex I'm just going to release the throttle and leave it off for a bit longer than I normally would so accelerate a little bit later than I normally would he's still going to stay behind me I kind of block him off so that's the second of the penalty gone. Uh, tact a tactical penalty um, use here. As we go into spoon curve, is it going to go down any more through here? Not quite on the first apex, or a little bit there through the middle. And through the second apex, not yeah, tiny, tiny amount. So maybe a tenth throughout the whole corner. So we've still got nine tenths to get rid of by the time we get to the end. He is 0.8 seconds behind though. So this puts me in a very interesting dilemma. Do I just go for it or do I just get rid of the penalty? I think we, as we come through Spoon, or sorry, 130R, a little bit wider. I'm lucky to not get any more penalty there, if anything. Into the chicane. Four attempts to get rid of. And I'm just going to keep it off. Just slow down nicely through there. And we've got the job done. So that was quite a sketchy one. That could have That could have gone worse if I wasn't a bit clever on the penalties although a lot of the penalty kind of got rid of itself on its own you know that wasn't down to me but in the end a victory I actually can win a race so I'm not a total noob although I was using them again so there is that but you see their top top six uh, five of them are McGann's so basically you just don't stand a chance if you don't use it which is a shame but it wasn't that isn't quite balanced but um, if everyone just uses it then I suppose it's a fair race but there we go guys, some more Gran Turismo Sport for you. I do hope you enjoyed, do subscribe if you're new and would like to see more. I hope to see you next time, thank you for watching, goodbye.